Hello everyone. In the last video, we took a look at the Open Web UI interface. We got an understanding about all of the different tools and functionalities that Open Web UI has to offer. In this video, we're going to be taking a slightly deeper look into the admin settings that Open, a Open Web UI has to offer. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll first start by taking a look at the admin settings or with, that's located in the admin panel. So the first thing that we'll see here is the dashboard. Now within the dashboard, we can see all of the different user accounts. And if you wanted to maybe add a new user, we could simply just do that by selecting add user. And we can say what role they are, whether they're pending user or admin. If I have a bulk of users, I can simply import them using a CSV or an Excel file. The next thing that we'll take a look at is just some general settings that we have available here. So within this tab, we can do things like enable new user signups, uh, what the default user role is going to be, whether it's a user, a pending or an admin. I can enable message rating and all of these different functionalities. Within the user tab, I can do things like set permissions for each users. I can also whitelist certain models. So say that I only want the users to use a very limited set of models. I could do that. I could say model whitelisting and this is the only model that I want user to be using. Well, I can simply do that here within this panel. Within my connections, I have access to things like OpenAI APIs. So for example, if I provide some sort of an API key, I can simply use that model that's provided through that OpenAI API, and it can simply be used in the Open Web UI interface. So it makes it really convenient to use all of those different models that you have available in just one interface. So it makes it very convenient to use. Within my models here, I, th I feel like this is one of the uh, most important parts of Open Web UI is the fact that if I wanted to maybe select a model, say that I'm searching through here and I see a model that I find interesting, something like the Mimotron Mini, all I would need to do is just copy this model and this model is created by NVIDIA. It's a model for generating responses for role playing uh, or for role playing, retrieval augmentation generation and function calling. It's a small language model, so that's perfect. Say that this is the model that I'd like to use. All I would need to do is just simply paste that model and I can select download. Once that's done, I will be able to see that this model is currently being downloaded. Now, because I have two or multiple models that are downloaded, I see this interface glitching a little bit, but if I just cancel the previous download, you can see here that this is working just fine. Once this model is completely downloaded, I should be able to use it just fine. The other thing that I have available here is in the documents tab. So here, I can select things like scan for documents within a certain directory. So if, for example, I want to populate some directory with documents and I want to just make sure that it's up to date with all of the documents that are located within that folder, I could simply just store all my documents there and then just hit the scan button and it's going to look for all of those documents. Here for my embedding model engine, I can decide whether I want to use the Olama, the OpenAI, or just the default sentence transformer. Um, I can select whatever embedding model that I want to use for my model, whether I want to use the um, sentence transformer, uh, all mini L language model uh, version two, or if I want to use any other sort of a embedding model for my purposes. So all of these are things that we're going to be looking at in a lot more detail. So we'll look at in this course, every single one of these tabs, and we'll also understand all of these different individual functionalities. The last thing that I just wanted to talk about was web search. So within web search, if you want to enable it, all we would need to do is define what engine we'd like to use, whether it's Google or DuckDuckGo or any other engine that we have available here, how many search result counts it needs to go through, how many concurrent requests, and uh, if we wanted to make it more than just English language. Within the interface here, we can change some of the settings for the models. For audio, I can set all of my audio settings. For images, I can set image, all of my settings for um, images, whether I wanted to maybe use something like a multimodal model, where I want to provide something like an image and then use that image to ask some questions. I could do all of those things here in this tab. So this is just to uh, give you maybe just like a general sort of high level overview 
of all of these different settings. And in the upcoming lectures, we're going to be looking at each one of these settings in a lot more detail as we progress through this course. So that's it for this video and stay tuned for the next couple of videos where we're going to dive into all of these components in a lot more detail.